All right, joining us now is uh, Gardner Minshew II um, on Pro Football Reference. He has only a couple nicknames. I thought he, I would peg him for a five, six nickname guy. We've got Mustache. We've got Jockstrap King. Uh, I've also heard you recently coin the phrase La Flama Blanca, which you and I have been both coined in the past. So I'm going to pass the torch to you. I feel like you're Ivan Dechenko to my Kenny Powers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right. Just, just two guys that enjoy some good pageantry, you know? <laughs> exactly. <I'm all> <laughs> but then lastly, uh, we've called you Moonshine Minshew on this show because we think it has a ring to it. Yeah, I've made moonshine in the past. So, I mean, it fits. It have fits. you made shine? 100%. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty terrible, but I made it and I drank it. So, so it was uh, safe. They'll see. So, yeah. 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 Cause you gotta, you gotta, it is the blue flame thing true? Like the yeah. blue flame over the spoon. Can you explain that? Yeah. To people? Uh, so basically, uh, I think you run a fine line of making like basically ethanol. Um, but I think we just made alcohol. Uh, nobody's <laughs> gone blind yet. So, so it's all good. So, so, with all those nicknames, which one do you prefer? Oh, dude, it's, it's whatever, man. Um, just as long as you call me, call me. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> and the most recent piece of non-football stuff with you, which was a little devastating to me personally, as somebody who's growing a, a mullet right now, I've been hit on twice in Montana uh, by young ladies that really prefer the Tennessee waterfall. Uh, it's yeah. like Cologne up here in Montana. You lost your mullet. What happened? W were you going through something? No, man, you know, there's a time for everything, you know, there's, there's a time to let it grow and there's a time to cut it off. Um, you know, I think, you know, one of the beautiful things about it, you know, is the short lifespan it had, you know, I feel like if it goes too long, then, you know, people get used to it, but I think there's a beauty in the, you know, in the limited timeline that it existed on this earth. Makes you appreciate the time you have with it. Exactly. Is there a post mullet depression? Do you feel weird for a couple of days with like all of that, that air on the back of your neck? You want to hear something crazy, man? I, so but right before I went, um, right before I went and got it cut, I went camping and whenever they cut it off, I found a tick on the back of my head. It was like Ooh. a few days later. So it was honestly probably a good thing. You know, I was going to get Lyme disease or something. But uh, well, I, I think they have trouble crawling through the waterfall. So I, th I don't think that tick was on you the past three, four years. Well, no, they, they nestle in there, man. I think it's uh, that's where everybody wants to be. You know, yeah. I, can't, I can't blame it, honestly. Hey, what do the women in your life think about the change in, in, in your hairstyle? Uh, yeah, my mom's pretty much just over everything that I do at this point. You know, <laughs> um, it started with the mustache and uh, you know, she got sick of that pretty, pretty quick. And then, um, you know, it's only gone downhill from there. Um, so yeah, it's, but, uh, the one thing I learned with the mullet, um, you know, it got you, uh, all kinds of attention, but a lot of time is, is that attention that you really didn't want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, you know, some of these, these ladies down South, like take charge and, you know, yeah, it's, it's a little scary when you got something like that, it's something to grab onto, you know, and you don't want two chicks from Mississippi fighting over you. Yeah, that's not good. Well, it, it, depending on how you look at it, it's good or, exactly. or not good uh, for the both of them. Uh, where where are you on shampoo? Uh, Trevor Lawrence, you know, your new teammate, what kind of shampoo is he using? What kind of shampoo did you use to keep that thing tame? Uh, man, honestly, like, I think whatever, I don't know what he uses, but whatever it is, it works. Uh, I think he's had a system in place for years now. It looks like this isn't, you know, he didn't just figure it out. He's, he's had great hair for a long time. Um, you know, I had, uh, I had some specific mullet shampoo. Uh, it had like a unicorn on the bottle. Um, and it, it and tail? was it main and tail? Was it the no, whole it, was, it wasn't main and tail. It wasn't main and You're tail. using horse shampoo. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was unicorn shampoo for mullets, which is the unicorn of all haircuts. So, uh, nice. I, I need to figure out that name. It'll come to me at some point. Um, uh, yeah, I was walking through Murdoch's the other day. If you know where Murdoch's, you know, Murdoch's is a chain, but it's like a ranch store. And, uh, you know, they had the mane and tail. And yeah. I was thinking to myself, maybe I need to run that through the waterfall and see what happens. Um, I want to start with some current event type stuff. Uh, you've been paying attention to the NIL stuff, I'm sure. People are getting paid. QBs are getting paid. Uh, it's totally chill. I think everybody freaked out and thought that it would be something where, like, the world would end as soon yeah. as college athletes got cut a check, but nothing's changed. Uh, you, in college, had this come down before you were done at Washington State. How much money would Gardner Minshew have made, and what would you have 
lend your likeness and image to? Yeah, no, it it had been great, man. Washington State was amazing. Um, the real question is how much money would I have spent? Um, you know, <laughs> I know me at, at 2021 with a pocket full of cash probably wouldn't have been the best thing. Um, but man, I, I don't know. You know, I think it uh, I think it's a great thing for these kids to be able to you know support themselves. Um, but I just know the dangers that can come with that as well. You know. What is Gardner Minshew spending money on that you can share on this podcast in 2018? Oh, in 18? Dude, so I didn't spend money on nothing, dude. I bought <laughs> I bought a mattress off Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks. It was listed at five, but I got there and I pulled up to this trailer and she's like, man, could you give me 10? I was like, yeah, I'll give you 10. <laughs> And then I found a dresser that was next to a dumpster. It wasn't in a dumpster. It was next to a dumpster. Totally acceptable. So I got that. And then I got a little side table from the thrift store for five bucks. So honestly, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't spend too much money if I'm being honest. You know, it's funny because actually on my list of current events, we have the Olympic village bed situation, which I know you've probably seen. And I'm really glad that you said that because I believe we're kindred spirits on this thing. I actually prefer sleeping on the ground as close to the ground as I can. And as I've accrued wealth through playing football and gotten married and accrued children, the wife expects, my lovely wife expects that we probably sleep on like a real bed. I like sleeping as close to the floor as possible. Is that what it is for you? Or are you just like a little bit frugal? Yeah. Uh, it's probably just me being a cheap ass more than anything. Uh, um, for being honest, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've spent plenty of nights, you know, on that hard ground and, uh, I think I'm a better man for it as well. What kind of bed are you rocking these days now that you're, uh, you're, you're big time NFL Garter Minshew. Yeah. You know, when we first come in as rookies, they give us that, uh, sleep number certificate, you know, <laughs> worth $5,000 and I spent they every do. penny. I, I figured out, you know, what, what kind of, what's the best bed, what's the best sheets, what, you know, everything I could get for that 5,000 without going over. So I got me a good sleep number. That's pretty oh, great. That's great. That's great that you cash that, that thing in because a lot of guys will let that thing sit in their locker and forget that it's there. And you <laughs> Nate, better not do it around me. You know, I, de- I definitely didn't use mine at all. Mm. That's so bad, dude. At all. Yeah. You could have had one of those mattresses that reclines and goes up and down and all that shit. So another current event here, people are going to space Gardner. Yeah. Uh, is it worth it? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, you know, it's kind of like there's everything out there in space, but there's also kind of nothing in space. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I like, you know, honestly, if I had the, if I could do it, you know, what, it'd, what it'd two, be kind of cool, right? What two teammates would you take? What two teammates? Shoot, I'd take my guy, Miles Jack, you know, just for, uh, you know, commentary and comic relief. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I'd probably, probably Andrew Norwell. You know, he'd uh, he'd probably take care of me in case anybody tried to pull up. You know, that's uh, that's who I'd want to take. In the space. Oh, that motherfucker finishes plays, dude. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like we were in preseason one time, and I was just like, "Bro, it's preseason. Come on." Yeah. I'm like, "That's the guy you want if you're a quarterback in front of you." <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he does not take a play off. And he's the one I always say, you know, if on our team we're in like a Hunger Games type situation, I'm picking Big Nasty okay. up the way. You know. Okay. He's just got that want to about him. That nasty. You, you always got to have that guy. Last off the wall question before we get into your athletic career here. We've got uh, a, a debate raging on on this uh, on this show for the past few weeks about tubing a river or floating a river in any capacity. You seem like a guy that floats a river. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. what I uh, shoot. About a couple months ago, I was floating the springs down in uh, Florida, man. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. No, is what's there a debate? Perfect, like, what's like your, that? Yeah, exactly. I, I can't believe there is a debate, but Nate says he, he can't get drunk on a river anymore. And that uh, my co-host who's not in today says that it's a, it, it's a child activity. No, that's just not right. You know, <laughs> um, you know, there's some things you got to put your foot down and say, you know, there's, there's right and wrong in this world. And I think it's right to get drunk on the rivers of America. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just don't, I just don't see any counter counter argument to that. There is none except being sunburned. If you forget your, uh, your, your spray, we were trying to build out the perfect river float, wondering what's the light beer of choice. What's the liquor of choice for Gardner Minshew? What's the, the flotation device of choice, a snack. Do you like cliff diving? What's your perfect day on the river? Yeah, man. Um, shoot. We got these springs down here in Florida. that are like super clear water. And I'll just throw some goggles on and go swim around those things for a while. That's pretty sweet. Um, but also, you know, just floating, you need, the biggest thing is you need a good current. 
Cause that's the worst is you have, you have to start paddling. That'll mess everything up. Yeah. You're dragging <laughs> ass. You're burning it's, calories. You need that lazy river. You know what I'm yep. saying? You don't need that active river. You need that lazy river. Where you can just lay back. And uh, yeah, man, you give me some good uh, Bud Light and some Tito's. You won't hear any complaints out of me. Bud Light and Tito's. There we go. All right. That's we're not far off here. I like to go to Natty Light just to bring me back to my college days. It's keep like you humble. I'm again. Yeah. Keep you humble. Keep you grounded. Right. Exactly. For somebody frugal, you would understand that. So 100%. I was doing some digging, man. You know, before you were a football star, you were on the Brandon First United Methodist Church basketball league team. Okay. And I'm reading that you guys beat a team 60 to two. That's right. Do you ever worry about going to hell because of that? Uh, no. Um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, maybe they should worry about, you know, not, you know, playing to the best of their abilities. You know, I, I play to glorify the Lord. That's what I was doing. There you know, we go. Do you think the Lord likes half asses? I don't think so. You remember your and, stat uh, line from that game? You remember your stat line? No, the only thing I remember from that game is I had a buddy that gave up the their one layup. Uh -huh. It was like in the in the <laughs> second half, and I didn't talk to him for a while. <laughs> I mean, that was that was just pretty ridiculous. They had no business scoring two points. No Dude, I, I like an incredibly competitive, uh, you know, kind of setting i would imagine to be beating a team 62 your coach was wild dude we we had practices we were running full court trap half court trap and it, it, it wasn't fair honestly like it was it was too much fun we were running the one three one the whole time running pushing it um you know except for the one guy that gave up the two points josh towers oh i was waiting <laughs> to see if you were saying my name I <laughs> I was just like, all right, hold on. <laughs> so you grow up in Mississippi, you're surrounded by SEC powerhouses. And like, obviously, you, you know, we talk about the different schools that you've been like all over the map, um, yeah. but you never spent time in the SEC. I mean, I guess you were close to going to Bama, but looking back at it now, is there a school that would have fit kind of your energy and like who you are as a dude, the best in the SEC? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I, I know they get pretty rowdy down at LSU. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you know, at Washington State, we threw it like 70 times a game. I think they threw it like 70 times a year at the time. <laughs> that wouldn't have been as much fun. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, man. I just never, you know, never made it around over there. They didn't, I guess I wasn't, you know. Well, you know, they say it means more. I guess I just didn't uh, mean enough to them. It didn't mean enough to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I know that, that that LSU energy, though, is something else. Like whenever I go down to Sugar Bowl for fun and they're playing down there, it's like, man, I could have seen myself in school here. Yeah, I really do definitely. think, I mean, like the fan base is crazy. But I wonder, like for you bouncing around was you seem like an adaptable guy. And that probably serves you well at the next level with everything the NFL throws at you. But like there's probably moments where you're lonely in college. Like you're like, fuck, dude, like, is this worth it? I don't love where I am. I'm alone here. Was there that moment for you? Uh, yeah. I mean, there was a couple, you know, when I first got to Troy, that was the first, you know, first time being away from home, first time for everything. That's kind of tough, you know, but, you know, got through that. Um, and then I remember at ECU, my first summer there, everybody like left town for July 4th. And I was like the only one. So I went to the movies and I just went and watched like three movies in a row. Just <laughs> they got one ticket and then just walked around, you know, made it through there. Uh, you know, but honestly, you know, you get through a July 4th like that. I think you can pretty much do anything. Yeah. What were the movies? Do you remember? Did you, you didn't, they, they, it was, uh, it was Tarzan, which I was excited for and, you know, wasn't, you know, wasn't anything to write home about. Then I watched, uh, I think it was like the second purge, which was, you know, <laughs> not also not great. And then there was one other. And, uh, at that point it didn't even matter. You know, I was just there. How good is that Halloween party at, uh, in G Vegas? Isn't that what y'all call it down yeah, there? Yeah, Halloween, man. It's, it's the <laughs> best. I'm telling you, like there's, there's nothing like it. Um, you know, you gotta, you got the hard thing is you gotta have multiple costumes, you know, you know, most of the time you think you just gotta get one. No, you gotta get three, maybe four. Uh, if you're planning on having a good week, um, what was your yeah. best, what was your best yeah, Halloween what was your best and what was your worst? <laughs> My best was when I got to Washington state, I did an awesome white Goodman, uh, from, uh, you know, dodgeball is when I had the mustache, everything going, it was, the hair was feathered and lethal it was perfect. Um, you know, I, I'm actually made it myself. You know, I got like the spider pads that we have. Oh, like, perfect. That. 
like I drew up like a big cobra, you know, and that was cool. Um, I'd say, yeah, that was my best one for sure. Do you have one you look back on and you're like, I didn't bring my A game? Um, man, it was probably sixth grade. Me and my buddy, <laughs> we went like basically in drag and like mine was, uh, it was like pageant Queens and I was misdemeanor. So. <laughs> <laughs> how about he's 12? How about he's 12? Like how fucking polluted was his mind? Dude? <laughs> Uh, Somebody oh, didn't have parental controls on the Davinci <laughs> house. <Yeah. laughs> so, that was great. Oh, that's fucking good. All right. Uh, so Mike Leach stories, because eventually after Troy, after what was it, Northwest Mississippi, was yep. it uh, JUCO? Yep. The JUCO stuff is crazy. That's right? Awesome. Like that's that's like a really hungry. I mean, like, I don't know so if good. you've ever like one of my best buddies, Eugene Sims, who I played with, uh, who's from Mississippi, he's from Mize. Um, okay. And he went to a JUCO down there and he told me it was the most competitive environment he's ever been in by like a hundred yards. I mean, so what was that environment like for a quarterback and what did you see? Oh, it was awesome, man. You know, like school's like pretty easy, you know, so that's not really a big deal. So outside of that, like you literally play football and hang out with your friends because there's nothing nothing else to do. Like they're all in these small towns all over Mississippi. And I loved it. Cause I mean, everybody's trying to get the hell out of there. You know, it's, it's not a place anybody's trying to hang around three, four years. Like everybody's on the same goal to move up and move out. And I think it just creates a great environment where guys push each other. And, um, it, it was a blast for me. I loved it. And I feel like it just a collect, it collects a lot of kids who don't have another choice. And so like, the, the competitiveness probably is just off the charts. I mean, if you can get, if you can survive Juco in Mississippi or, you know, like, like you said, one of these small towns, it probably really tests your sanity sometimes a little bit. Absolutely. Cause you're there for football and that's the only reason, like if, yeah. if you have any other reasons, like you're not going to make it, you know? So it really tests, you know, how much you, how bad you really want. It. What is like the Edmonton of uh, Juco cities? I'm not no shade Edmonton, but people say it's cold and desolate there. Yeah, I mean, I think they're all pretty much about the same. But I will say East Mississippi, Scuba, Mississippi. Uh, I got a few buddies, got a teammate right now, Dakota Allen, went there. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> like, they got this great football facility out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it's it's crazy. Like, they got a subway, and then down the street, they have another subway. So, I mean, that's like, <laughs> they yeah. got choices, dude. If they're, <laughs> out of, if they're out of fucking meatballs at the one, <laughs> you're good, dude. You end up, though, uh, up in Washington which probably won a big culture shock. It's like just a way different place. Uh, I know it's beautiful up there and all that, but you know, you end up with Mike Leach and I hear the pitch was, Hey, if you go to one of these sec schools, you're not going to throw the ball. He made promises to you. Was that relationship? Did that hit the ground running or did it take like some growing pains between y'all? No, it was great, man. I loved, uh, love coach Leach, man. Um, you know, one of the things people don't, really know about coach Leach is coach Leach loves the Florida keys. Like he's down there more than he's in anywhere else. So like I saw him like for my first weekend at uh, Washington state. And I don't know if I saw him again till camp. <laughs> so it's was, it was, it was kind of a different deal. Like he's in the keys, like that's no ifs, ands or buts about it. Um, but I remember like the first phone call is because during practice that day, me and our starting middle linebacker got in a fight. Um, and that's when like, he called me and like, we talked for like an hour and I knew like, that's when I was kind of winning over him and winning over the team. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really when it started. How'd you pick the starting middle linebacker to fight with? Is this one of those situations where you walk in the first day and you got to beat up the biggest, baddest guy? <laughs> no. Nah, well, first off, he ain't the biggest and baddest. <laughs> yeah, that's my boy Peyton Ploy. We're like, <laughs> best friends now. but, uh, Dude, it was like one of those days, offense is kind of struggling. We fumble. He brings it over to me. I throw it back at him, and it, it kind of, you know, all kind of goes. Oh, I know that move. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, just especially, you know, you get halfway through camp, everybody hates everybody. And, yeah, you know, it, it, it doesn't take much at all. Throwing the ball thing back at, at a defensive player, that's like when you do it, you know that something follows. Yeah. Yeah. And that, the, honestly, that was, uh, that was the like first fight we got in. We got another one, like on the bye week too, like where he kind of like punched the ball out late and I just kind of punched him in his face a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and, and like didn't go anywhere from there. But I was just like, 
cut, cut this shit out, dude. That's the best part about college fights. For the most part, guys make up when you oh, fight yeah. in the NFL, it's harder to make up. You're like, dude, I have, you know, I have a family at home. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I, yeah, I can't be fighting people. So with Mike Leach, a little backstory, Danny Amendola and me came up together and Danny went to Texas tech with Mike. And I'm sure Mike's talked about Danny, mm-hmm. but every year we'd go to Bonnaroo. And when the whole thing was shut down at three in the morning, we go back in our RV and call Mike Leach and Mike Leach <laughs> would always pick up. And me and Mike okay. Leach have probably talked to combined like three hours on the phone. I remember none of it. Yeah. Um, he talked to Coachella in the middle of the day. He picked up and talked to us for 30 minutes. <laughs> Do you ever drunk down Mike Leach? <laughs> Uh, man. Yeah. It, it always just happens. And then, um, I actually, I, we got some teammates that have this app to where they can get people to call each other, you yeah, know, yeah. from other phones. So they would, they would did, they did that for like two weeks back and forth with me and coach Leach. And we were like, just talking like every other day for like two weeks about nothing. And what like, is this app? What is this like, app, dude? I don't know. They, they figured it out, but like, it was hilarious. We need that, that app. Definitely yeah. to find out what that app is. That sounds, that sounds hilarious. Cause he so, just kept so, texting me, Hey man, I'm just calling you back. I'm like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, all right, I'm going to call him. But we shouldn't have talked about nothing for, you know, 20, 30 minutes at a time. What's your favorite leech rant? Uh, the Bruin, definitely formidable. Another bear up there at Cal. Uh, the tree, I imagine that tree's going to get chopped down. Do you have one that you've seen on YouTube that that's your favorite? And, and is there one that needs to come to light that he often hits the players with? Um, man, he had like his like rehearsed, um, like Friday speech, uh, you know, going to the hotel, you know, we're not going to wear any other team's hats. Cause we don't give a f- about any other teams and like, and everybody could just kind of do it along with them. You know, the whole thing, cause mm-hmm. he said the same thing every week and that was always fun. Uh, my year, we were actually pretty good. So he really didn't rip into us too much. The yeah. last one I'm curious about is the pirate obsession. Is he really obsessed with pirates? Yeah, no, he's all about it. He has the whole pirate and the pirate chest in his uh, locker. And I mean, in his office. Um, yeah, he's all for it. It's kind of, it's kind of wild. So you end up in Jacksonville. Uh, you get kind of, I feel like your first two years, man, it's so hard for you. I know you're not going to complain, but you know, like you don't, you don't get into the game until Nick Foles goes down. My boy broke his collarbone. So you go right in and you're slinging darts, which is awesome, but you haven't had reps with the ones, you know, and then the next year with COVID, you don't have time to work out with the ones. And that makes a big difference for people that don't know in in the NFL, especially on offense. How have you, like, how have you overcome that? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned in the NFL is everybody kind of take care of their own shit, you know? Um, you know, and I think it starts with, you know, making sure, you know, everything backwards and forwards, you know? And I think if you do that, then, you know, as you have other guys, add them in, you can help bring them along. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things I've I've learned, uh, you know, you really have to know it first for yourself before you can, yeah, too much else. Yeah, it's hard because you're a young quarterback. It's like people expect somebody to be a leader, but you're learning your stuff too. And I know it's hard to walk that line between like, hey, I just need to handle my shit. I can't be a hypocrite. If I'm making mistakes, I can't get on other people. But that's unrealistic. I know you have to yeah. step up even as you're learning. Yeah, absolutely. And that's when I think, you know, at a certain point, you just have to say, screw it. And, you know, you're just going to, you're a ball player at some point. You know, and you got to have that swagger of a ball player where you're walking out there and you know you're the baddest one out there. And, uh, you know, even if it might not be true at the time, you know, you got to believe it or else nobody else will. Um, so, you know, that's I think that confidence is a huge thing. Has that has it helped you? Because you seem like a guy who can thrive in chaos. And when you're like on a team, you know, no offense to the last two two teams you've been on, but they haven't been, you know, top of the league talent wise, um, younger teams there's chaos, dude. Like I've been on a lot of teams like that. And I don't know if it helps you because you can get off script and there will be things that are off script. Have you kind of taken pride in that, uh, amid a little bit of that chaos? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you hit on earlier, you have to be adaptable. And I think, you know, my whole kind of career, you know, being everywhere learning, it's like, I think it's nine offenses in eight years, you know, all of that kind of trains you to be adaptable to, you know, hey, the situation's not going to be perfect, but, you know, you have to make it make it work. 
And um, I think that's something that served me well. How do you find spaces to throw? I mean, like, obviously you're not six, five, like who cares? There's not, you know, that's not, we're not doing that anymore, but you guys have to have a knack, like realistically that taller guys might not. Is there some secret sauce for you as far as like finding lanes? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you're seeing it, you're not, you're not even like seeing it like that. Um, you know, you know, where, as long as you can see where the defensive guy is, you know, you know, where your guy's going to be. And, um, I think a lot of times you have to be good at that. And then sometimes, you know, it just happens where you see it, but, you know, growing up, I was always watching Drew Brees trying to see his, you know, he's so good with his just subtle moves to find lanes. Um, you know, not taking a step a yard over, but, you know, maybe sliding six inches and that buys him enough space to, you know, put it between two guys. But, you know, I think that's all things that, you know, I'm working on and continuing to work on. Yeah. And I feel like as a rusher, I mean, we give you guys that, that step up lane between, you know, the B and the C a lot, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yep. I feel like you do that really well where you climb and hide and then find a okay. lane. I feel like so many of your highlights are off script, which is fun. And it's, I think why people are drawn to your style of play. Is there one play or one game that I think perfectly kind of encompasses what you're about that you've, uh, that you've had so far in the NFL? Yeah. I mean, my favorite play, man, was, uh, playing against Denver and I drop back, uh, make like one guy miss another, like slide up next guy comes through make him miss and one more. And then the running back who's running a swing route comes all the way around to the back of the end zone and back out. And, uh, we throw it and score a touchdown and that ends up propelling us to go win the game. Um, I thought that was just so much fun, you know? What's the hardest you've been hit, you know, like yet, like were you buying time or were you sitting in the pocket? You have to remember one that you were just like, holy shit, this felt different than college. Yeah, dude, it was my first preseason game. We're playing the Ravens and uh, we have like kind of a low snap and I bobble it. And like, right as I stand up, the blitz and linebacker just hits me right in the teeth, knocks my helmet off and everything. It was awesome. Like we were, <laughs> I was showing somebody the video the other day. Like it was, it was, it was really good. And the worst part is it's the first one. So you're thinking like, oh, is everyone, is there all these hits like this? Dude, I got my helmet knocked off three times in my first preseason game. Oh, I was like, God, God dang. Dude, this <laughs> dude, I think you balled. Didn't you ball in your first preseason game? No. <laughs> no, you bought, wait, did you ball in preseason? I feel like you balled in preseason at some point you had to. Uh, no, I played okay, man. We um, actually led the NFL in like snaps played in the preseason which is just a stat that nobody wants. Um, That's what it was. You were, honestly, you were trending a lot. In yeah, season. dude, it, it helped me so much, though, you know, getting all those, you know, hits in the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, James Robinson, how much fun was it to see this kid last year? And do you think, like, I feel like you got this, too, like your rookie year, you were in, you should have been in the conversation for rookie year. You know, like, your numbers were there, you know, and, and Kyler was being talked about. Do you feel like it's really hard not to fly under the radar down there? And that's no indictment on the fan base. It's just people don't pay attention at this yeah. point. No, I think that's a big part of it. Also, you know, I came in six round. James is undrafted. Um, you know, definitely not getting the attention from the jump like some of the guys are getting. Uh, but, man, it was awesome seeing James. Like, he's a guy, like, whenever he's there in camp, like, you just started seeing flashes, man. He just had great vision, great patience. And, um, you know, you knew if he ever got a, got a chance, he, he'd be pretty good. Um, and he's also a guy like, I'm pretty sure he's like, I think he's from Illinois, like state high school rushing record, led the FC, FCS in rushing two times. Right. And now we're like, we're surprised he's a good football player. Like, seriously, like dude's always been good. Like, I, I think we just have to be more less surprised about the player and just more used to the fact that like the system doesn't get it right. And if we'd stop being surprised, like it would make more sense to us. And I also think like stigmas follow guys. Like, so you could play like a first rounder and you know, people might keep that tag on your head because they're so dogmatic. These talent evaluators and coaches, they're like, they, that's such a confirmation bias for them. And yeah. for me, I was drafted high and I had a slow start for, for a year and a half. I looked like a real bust. So that was hard to overcome like football, the football world, like they can't get out of their own way with their confirmation bias. I feel like evaluating players. Absolutely. And I think a lot of it's kind of an ego thing. You know, they all want to prove how right they were, you know, they take a guy early, you know, we got to be right on this guy. They're going to give him every chance. You know, if a guy does well late, you know, well, he's still, you know, limited or he's still, you mm -hmm. know, this is why, you know, we didn't, 
And I think it's always trying to prove themselves right um, instead of just kind of taking guys for what they are. Okay, so new system in 2021. Um, what's the difference between your old offense and this new one? Uh, and, and how excited are you about it? Yeah, I'm fired up, man. Coach Bev, he's awesome. Um, you know, I think you want to learn one thing in the NFL. Everybody does basically the same stuff. You right. know, it, it's going to be, you know, who calls it different in the game. Um, you know, one thing we've been working, you know, some more of the spread RPO stuff, which I, I love. Like, that. that's so much fun to me. Uh, it's how the game's supposed to be played. Um, you know, so, I mean, I think, you know, doing that's coming along. That's going to be a big help for us as well. Do you think that defensives have like not caught up to the RPO, but like they've definitely probably tried to evolve the way they play it. And you being like one of these college quarterbacks in the era of like, you know, Hey, this is what we do. Um, it's totally different from when Nate and I played college football, but like, do you think defenses have adjusted and what have you seen them do? Yeah, no, I think they've adjusted uh, basically how they're like backside linebackers play, have to play. Um, you know, everybody's teaching you, you know, they're going to pop, pop and then read it out. Um, but I think, you know, there's still a lot of stuff there, you know, as the RPO game can continue to evolve, uh, that you can stay kind of one step ahead. Uh, cause that's what I, I mean, I really feel like usually you see in the NFL, you know, offense is usually a couple years, then defense catch up and then it's the next hot thing, you know, and it just kind of goes in waves like that. And, uh, that's why I think you gotta stay on top of, um, uh, you know, so there, so there is more ingenuity offensively, you know, that can, you know, stay ahead of the defensive. A lot of meat on the ball. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, like, and I feel like Jacksonville is a great fit for you. The people love you. I feel like you have a real, it's not contrived. It's a real kind of, Hey, I'm home thing there, yeah. at least from the outside. And I, I wonder as you've kind of immersed yourself in that culture, what's your favorite Jaguar fan kind of tradition, some idiosyncrasy that they have that you've fallen in love with. I know Nate might have something to say about this too from his time down Duval. there. Duval. <laughs> right. You can't beat that. Um, but I think one of the cool things is when I came in, you know, rocking the jorts and, uh, you know, the mustache and then even the mullet, they were, they've been doing that here. Like that's, yeah, that's yeah. not new to them. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like, Oh, it's another guy doing it. Like you look up in the stands, like, Oh, he's dressed like me. No, he's been coming to games like that for years, <laughs> you know? Um, so I think it's just costume, dude. Yeah. Quick, quick question. You're wearing the costume. <laughs> hey, quick question. Since I used to play in Jacksonville, Jackson DeVille, the mascot, what's the most impressive thing that you've seen him do since you've been there? Uh, when he does the jumping off thing and, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like bungee jumping. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. So like, I mean, I, 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 I'm kidding. I just gotta do that. Yeah, I know. He's I I I hope he gets paid the most. But like, I know like from playing there, people might not know it unless you're a diehard Jags fan or down there. But he does the most unbelievable stunts that really I don't think a mascot should do. But it's definitely entertaining. <laughs> but at Absolutely. least a couple times a year, he zip lines into the stadium from like the top lights. Like it's yeah. stuff that like if you're getting ready for a game. Like you have to kind of like, like zone yeah, out for a second to, up, to be like, what, what is he doing? What is he about to do? Dude, I always, I always take a second and just watch, you know, <laughs> just like, heck yeah, this is it right here. This is what about the, what about the pool? I always watch the pool. I'm, I'm, I'm so fascinated with the pool. There have to be people peeing in the pool. You know, it. there's no, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, I mean, you look up there, I, I guess we got a couple of them now. Um, you know, I, I think it's great. I'd love to be out there sometimes, you know, on a real hot day. But no question, your fourth quarter, middle of the fourth quarter of a game, if you were in the stands, you're jumping in that thing. Yeah, no doubt. hundred percent. A lot of faith in chlorine. Yeah, I mean, you got to, you know, I think, uh, you know, honestly, you, you, I think pretty much everybody, I saw a stat, it was everybody that was in those pools in the last couple of years, none of them got COVID. They were immune. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. That. That's good. <laughs> they did a study. That's good. I think I saw an article on that. Oh, my goodness. I think I saw an article on that. The Jaguars uh, pool. <laughs> Tebow, larger than life still? Like, what do you, because I feel like you have to know, like, regionally, even though you're young, it's just, it's really hard to understand as a college football player, how big time he was like, cause I played about the same time with him. And I wonder if you, if you ever catch yourself, like having to talk to a teammate and be like, that's fucking Tim Tebow, dude. Dude, every day. It's so cool. Like I did, I throw him touchdown and just 
the best thing ever. I was going crazy just yelling Tebow touchdown. Like <laughs> I, that's what like I had his jersey growing up. Like I went to one of his games. I actually shook his hand before a game. Uh, oh. pretty sure he doesn't remember it, but uh, you know that's something that'll stick with me for a what long. What an time. asshole! Come on. Yeah, right. Just pretty bad, pretty bad dude. Pretty but, bad uh, guy. Like that. Yeah. But no, it's it's so cool, man. And like you meet him and. He's everything you'd want him to be and more like, it's so cool. Yeah. I just, everybody has said, and I've met him once or twice. He's like just the genuine, he is Tim Tebow. It is not a myth. It's so cool. Like, which is so rare to meet people that are not like myths. Like they're not frauds. I mean, well, how are you guys using him? Do you feel like he's like, he's come to work like a rookie mindset wise? Absolutely. Um, you know, we haven't been in pad yet pads yet so you know kind of figure that out more in camp but i mean he's attacking special teams drills he's attacking every drill he's running drill to drill um you know everything is high energy with him uh you know if if he messes something up you know you see some guys can shake it it, it affects him you know he doesn't like it he, he wants to get it right he's going to go to the side get a couple reps get right and come back in um and he's a guy that just genuinely wants it man and yeah it, it's awesome to see He's got to have that dad strength now too. I mean, I feel like he got stronger from college. I don't know what happened, yeah. bro, but he's just like, I'm kind of worried. He might, he he might be able to like body slam me. And I'm like, Holy shit. I used to tackle you for a living. Yeah. He's pretty yoked up, dude. Like you should see how much this dude eats, man. He eats all the time. It's crazy. What's he snacking on, bro? Dude. So we'll have practice and then, you know, we'll go to a lift after and he's going to have a shake, two wraps and like maybe something else before the lift. It's like, dude, just straight protein, man. I love it. And he's still power cleaning and doing all that crazy shit. Man, I saw him on the row machine the other day. Like, it it was ridiculous. You know, I think everybody in the weight room is kind of getting mad. They're having to change so many plates. You know, he's just blowing it out. You know, Look like, at the VO2 max on that guy over there, huh? Just happens to be a fucking legend. <laughs> His lungs are enormous. Yeah. Uh, all right, so this year, I mean – you know, you hear trade rumors, that sort of thing. I don't expect you to comment on anything like that, but just your mindset coming into a season where like, realistically they drafted, you know, who they hope to be the next, the, the second coming and you're still competitive. Like you want to play football. I, I guarantee that. So how do you, how do you take your mindset into a very abnormal year? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, man, in preparation for the competition, I haven't, I haven't taken a shit in weeks. It's not <laughs> really an option for me. Number two is not an option. I, tell you that. I, 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 like, like I feel that. like anybody, I like that. anybody that comes in and thinks that's an option, that's what they're going to get. Ooh, you know God. what I'm saying? So, ah, yeah, I, I, that's I, a bar right there. I've been, uh, so you don't, you don't want a no stool softener for you then. You no, just want sir. To... I'm holding it. <laughs> like no South choice. Park when they eat a bunch of PF Changs. Yeah. Uh, damn dude. That's a, that is a bar. That's a, bar. But yeah, man. That's what like, I, you know, I know the work I put in, I trust that I'm as ready as I can be. So, I mean, it doesn't matter outside of that, you know, I'm fired up because yeah. I like how I play right now. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, I love, I love that you have that attitude. I know fans do too, because it's, it's fun to watch. And so we wish you the best, uh, moonshine Minshew, what, what it, we'll call yeah. you that on this show, but whatever you want to call them. Uh, he, he, he's, he's Gardner Minshew and he is coming to compete this year. Thank you, Gardner. Thank you. I appreciate y'all.